everyone, and welcome to this Telet Centurion webinar, Industrial IoT, a Comprehensive Guide to 5G, Private LTE, and more. I'm Amanda Flink, the Head of Global Events here at Telet, and I will be moderating our event today. Um, to explain this topic, I am pleased to be joined by Safi Khan, our Regional Product Marketing Director at Telet Centurion. Um, now, just before I hand it over to Safi to start the presentation, I have just a few quick reminders for our audience. Um, we will have time to answer some questions at the end of our presentation today. Uh, so simply submit a question by posting in that questions box, which you should see located near the bottom of your screen. Uh, also, please sh be sure to check out the, uh, the resources section for some additional information on today's topic. There you'll find a white paper on private LTE, a 5G blog article, and a few other things. Um, finally, we will send out the replay link uh, to the attendees at the conclusion of this webinar, so be on the lookout for that. Um, and with that, Safi, I will hand it over to you to start our presentation today. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Amanda. Hello, everyone. My name is Safi, and today I will be walking you through the webinar, which is about industrial IoT. So I'm really happy to be uh, here today uh, talking about this very important subject. So let me move to the agenda slide. So today what you will learn from this webinar is um, what is the key difference between uh, regular IoT, which is Internet of Things, versus uh, what we call specially uh, industrial IoT. And so I will cover the differences. And then there's uh, some key uh, important aspects of industrial IoT that we will cover, uh, such as predictive maintenance and uh, reliability and things like that. Uh, and then uh, because industrial IoT is uh, really addressing uh, manufacturing and industrial um, factory environment, uh, we want to cover this uh, in more detail uh, today because that's really the crux of uh, the, the matter where how how does industrial IoT really address uh, um, uh, factory environment, uh, which is noisy and uh, sometimes it can be large and it can be challenging to have especially connectivity and reliable um, uh, connection for the machines. So we will look at uh, what a simple non-industrial IoT enabled factory looks like and then we will see what this uh, smart factory may look like, which has all of the features that uh, we will focus on. So we will see that um, example. And of course, uh, you know, Telex Interion is a company that is primarily involved and engaged in uh, cellular and wireless connectivity. So our focus will be about uh, 5G technology and specifically private networks private 5G, private LTE, uh, and how they are addressing the needs of the factory uh, and industrial IoT. Uh, and then we'll look into, you know, what are some of the technical reasons uh, that make uh, 5G or private cellular a more suitable and good uh, choice as a connectivity technology for uh, factories, manufacturing, and industrial IoT. And we'll uh, end the webinar by showing you, you know, what Telex Interion is doing in this space and what uh, modules we have and the products that um, would be uh, useful. So with that, uh, we will get started uh, today. And let me advance the slide. Okay, so the first thing to talk about is uh, which industrial verticals impact get impacted when we talk about industrial internet of things now internet of things may mean different things to different people and uh, for example uh, i could think of my home a smart home to be full of things which are connected and i might call that iot so for example uh, a ring doorbell or a uh, smart sensors for windows uh, or a panel uh, for security, which is a tablet, uh, smart appliances that have connectivity and they can speak and they can tell you uh, when something is running low, uh, smart speakers where you can, for example, talk to Alexa or Siri. So these are, you know, very good examples of Internet of Things 
but it's mostly the examples I gave you are consumer internet of things. So what we will talk about today is completely different from that where when we say IIoT, our industrial IoT, which I like to call it, we're not talking about the consumer uh, touch point, but rather we are talking about these industries which are really more enterprise grade and have stricter and harsher uh, performance requirements than consumer IoT. So we will talk about Smart Factory and Industry 4.0, which is basically the factories of today and tomorrow not yesterday so we will differentiate that then you know smart grid and uh, delivery of uh, clean energy uh, is very important so we now have uh, renewable energy sources like uh, solar and wind farms and the energy utility companies are making the grid much much more uh, sophisticated so that they can have some more real-time intelligence and uh, quick response times to failures or downtime and full end-to-end -end monitoring of the state of the grid. So energy and utilities is a big vertical where industrial IoT will play and is playing a role. Uh, military is another very important aspect. So um, smart devices in the battlefield can have a private network, for example, a private 5G network where uh, all the gear that a soldier is wearing uh, when deployed in the field has to have very high reliability and operate in very harsh environment. So that is a very uh, relevant uh, industrial vertical where this subject is uh, front of mind. And then uh, telematics and tracking. So in transportation, uh, you can have supply chains which are impacted uh, from uh, let's say environmental uh, weather uh, or as we saw uh, the whole pandemic COVID-19 impacted the supply chain and people wished that they had more visibility into you know the the tracking of the supply chain uh, real-time tracking so telematic tracking another big vertical so uh, and lastly so oil and gas exploration, uh, mining, uh, these are large deployments and they are outdoor. So this is where, for example, a Wi-Fi network may not suffice uh, to get the adequate coverage that is needed to uh, fully equip all the machines uh, with smart connectivity, especially uh, because they are moving around, they're mobile, and they cover a large um, geographical area. Some of these mines can be very large and also a challenging coverage environment because the mine can go indoors and come outdoors. So for having full coverage, we will talk about how these uh, uh, verticals, especially mining, oil and gas exploration, could benefit from the industrial IoT, especially enabled by 5G and private 5G, private LTE. So this will be the topic for the webinar today, and I hope that you will understand that because of the limit of time, we will limit our discussion um, mainly to things which are relevant to, let's say, these uh, verticals, because I can talk about IoT all day, about all the smart things uh, that are available out there, but those are differentiated as consumer IoT uh, but today we will talk about industrial IoT. So the reason I am emphasizing this so much is because IoT means different things to different people, and it can be very important for those who are involved in the consumer side, and we are also involved in that side. Uh, but more so, what we see from a business intelligence and enterprise benefit, we see that it's important to realize which verticals really do benefit from it. So, so let's keep going. Uh, so we will cover that. So now let's get into uh, how do we define uh, industrial IoT and what are the true benefits that come out of it. And so this is sort of a uh, industrial IoT 101. So how do we introduce it? So there are many aspects which are very key um, to this uh, enablement. So cloud connectivity is one of the most important things. 
And coupled with cloud connectivity is the ability for sensors to be connected to that cloud through a wired or wireless interface so that they can uh, send their sensor data for an analysis. And then the machines that collect this data are doing something. They are performing a task or uh, observing or monitoring something, or they are transporting something from one place in the factory to another place. Uh, but the data that they're generating continuously is the real-time data. It could be analyzed later, but the key difference here is that when you can have visibility directly into real-time data, that is the key business advantage which can give you, uh, you know, lots of uh, advanced warnings uh, to be able to do a lot of things uh, to keep that factory running smoothly and efficiently uh, in terms of uh, the IT system, the information technology, as well as the OT system, which is the operational technology. Because the the key KPI or key performance indicator for a factory is that it is running uh, at peak efficiency all the time. So data is basically the kind of the currency uh, of this industry. So the data is what is uh, you know important, and real time access to the data is the most important uh, aspect. Uh, where uh, you can actually do actionable intelligence and take decisions in real time and then automate them uh, through software and uh, that way the machine and you can you can apply artificial intelligence machine learning to to make the process uh, scalable and also uh, quick uh, so you can prevent uh, downtime or or minimize the downtime. <clears throat> Finally, the engineers uh, who are basically monitoring or running this whole operation uh, can actually be uh, physically removed from the harmful or dangerous zone, and they can do all of the functions remotely, uh, and that is made possible because the 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 wireless and wired technology for connectivity uh, plays a, a big role in it. So all these uh, points that we touched on, uh, improved automation, uh, optimization, and decision-making, that's, that's, that's what happens when you can manipulate the data at your fingertips easily. And then overall reliability of the factory increases and safety, of course, safety is very, very important. That also is key. Uh, and the productivity, so the you know, factory can produce more with uh, in less time. Uh, responsiveness important. So if you have a hazard uh, or uh, due to changing environment uh, in terms of supply and demand, you can respond quickly in terms of changing the tooling or um, accessing more inventory uh, and uh, having a more smart end-to-end -end supply chain. And then adaptability where you can basically and produce different goods uh, simultaneously. So these are some of the reasons why we put so much focus and attention on industrial IoT um, so that the factories uh, are better than their predecessors. So as I said, that we will then drill down. Uh, so it's a broad subject and we can keep talking about it. Uh, but for this webinar, we decided to focus on uh, three uh, main aspects or advantages, uh, or what we call the three pillars of industrial IoT. So I'll talk about optimization, which is very important. Uh, predictive maintenance is a new thing uh, where you can actually use um, smart software, AI, to do uh, very very accurate predictive maintenance and then supply chain management so let's let's see uh, what happens in these uh, three pillars so if you pick up optimization uh, you know if you think of an old factory that used to have analog information like we say it's not digitally transformed 
uh, they they could be having uh, areas in the factory that could be improved, uh, but nobody had the visibility into the system to the level that we do have today because the sensors have become cheaper, low cost, so everything can be monitored uh, without too much overhead. And then the factories that are enhanced by this uh, industrial IoT connectivity capabilities, uh, they can provide lots and lots of real-time data that you can do actions on and have some decision makers that can do optimization. Now, ultimately, that, that leads to increased revenue opportunity. So, you know, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, profit uh, is very uh, key to um, the factory. So the revenue opportunity comes from optimization, and that's one of the things that industrial IoT enables. And, of course, with that, uh, you have operational efficiency, so you have less waste. So that's one of the pillars um, of industrial IoT. And the second one is predictable, predictive maintenance, um, which means that uh, alarming or informing the, uh, the factory system uh, about something that does need um, replacement or a maintenance check or a health check ahead of the failure. So the idea is to minimize the failure and the downtime. So any abnormalities that might happen uh, the data or the system is learning from the past data. So if you have parts in the machine or the factory that you have some historical data available on their mean time between failure, for example, MTBF. So if you're getting close to that or a threshold that is set up, then that can be a trigger or an alarm in the factory to say such and such part has now exhausted its um, useful life and it's about to have a failure statistically. So sometimes it may not happen, but because you did the preventive or predictive maintenance, uh, you are ensuring that those breakdowns don't occur. And so the sensors, like I said, because they have become low cost, now it is possible to uh, basically the send the usage and the condition of the machines and the parts back into the cloud and the system and that can be compared against, you know, manufacturer's specs uh, to see if they are keeping up uh, or if they need um, some um, replacement time. And that can be planned ahead then. And so that maximizes productivity again and goes back to the optimization and the increased revenue opportunities. So um, that is the second pillar. Uh, the third pillar, of course, supply chain. We talked about it, uh, you know, it was a very big topic in the last two years, three years uh, after COVID hit, uh, we saw the, the mm, you know, disruption that happened in the supply chain. So how can industrial IoT and the smart factory uh, help with that? So industrial IoT can augment the factories with a smart supply chain. Uh, and it's a basically a feedback loop. And so this a smarter supply chain can close that feedback loop. And so, you know, factory can go back all the way to the source of the raw materials and inform that point in time about the needs of the factory and the current inventory levels and the rate at which it is consuming them. And when would then, for example, the next shipment of raw material would be required. So it can be dispatched at the time uh, that takes into account the, the amount of time the shipping will take or the you know time it will take for that those goods to be um, uh, sent via railroad or truck or um, aeroplane or any other like by ship. So gaining real-time visibility across the entire chain improves the business decisions. And so that's really the key uh, <clears throat> pillar of uh, industrial IoT. All right, so with that, um, next, now we will start looking at the actual examples uh, of what these uh, basically um, smart factories will look like. So what you're seeing right now is, for example, uh, a typical uh, factory, let's say. You have stations where a product assembly is happening. 
at the top you see some uh, conveyor belt on which a product or an AGV or an automated guided vehicle can move around in the factory and that is heavily used to uh, bring material from one station to the next uh, back and forth or the tools to transport the tools. Uh, so, <clears throat> so this factory has, you know, lots of requirements in terms of uh, being able to monitor the health of all the machines that are uh, in there. So now if we just uh, move to the next uh, overlay, now what you see is a uh, factory that is really geared for some industrial Internet of Things. And <clears throat> why is that so? Uh, that is because now you see a lot of these uh, arrows pointing from some of those machines to basically the systems that are listed on the left. And these systems are like SAP, Oracle, uh, IBM. So these are smart uh, factory systems that are basically running uh, uh, algorithms which are touching on all those things that we talked about the predictive maintenance, the supply chain, uh, this uh, basically the, you know, the health of the factory and the machines and the, the whole operation. So there is, you know, like I said, IT and OT systems at play. Those are basically cloud-based instances of uh, an infrastructure or like uh, information technology system running, as well as a system of operational technology system running. Now, how how do they get the visibility? Is by the connections that are made from these smart devices back into the cloud. And what makes that possible? It is uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, it can be uh, 5G. It can be LTE, 4G. Uh, so any, uh, it can be Ethernet. It can be fiber. So the most convenient form is, of course, wireless communication, but Today we will talk about 5G and why it is so reliable and has the benefit to be a suitable technology for this kind of an environment where you see at the top, for example, a smart router or a gateway that is collecting a lot of information from different machines and then communicating it to the cloud through the internet. So this is really uh, the smart factory uh, envisioning uh, for the future and what it would uh, really look like. So since I told you that we and our focus is on 5G, so now what we do is, you know, keeping that same vision of the factory in mind, we touch on the aspects that are uh, truly enabled by uh, 5G, for example. So, so let's take security cameras, right? So a lot has happened in the last few years uh, to improve computer vision algorithms, uh, computers running um, artificial intelligence and machine learning can actually see, like our eyes can see and our brain can process things. These smart security cameras uh, can basically see the object and classify them. Or in the case of uh, an infrared camera, they can actually do a deeper scan of examples, for example, widgets which are being manufactured and look for defects in them. And that's the whole job of uh, the factory line workers of the past, where the parts that were produced, they would physically inspect them and put them in a bin. And if they were defective ones, they would put them in another bin. But now with a 5G enabled security camera, because 5G has a very fast uplink, which is the data rate at which 5G can talk to the base station, you can actually now go up to very high 4K resolution camera at a very high frame rate. So imagine that the camera has such high resolution that it can detect even the most minor defects in a printed circuit board or any anything that is being manufactured. And then robots who are also enabled with 5G can separate the binning of good parts versus bad parts automatically. So, so now you see one use case where a 5G enabled security camera or cameras deployed throughout the factory can 
uh, be so useful. But the challenge is how do these cameras um, get that 5G connectivity at a low cost point and with the reliability and security and, and speed that is needed to do the manufacturing uh, at a high speed. Similarly, industrial robots have the connectivity technology, then basically they can be remotely controlled, uh, they can be remotely guided, and also they can also um, be instructed uh, with new instructions when you have to swap one part for another and start manufacturing a different uh, object. AGV is another uh, very important part of the factory. I touched on it. So automated guided vehicle is the one that runs in the conveyor belts, uh, predetermined routes. Uh, now certain factories are also making uh, autonomous robots uh, as free running robots on the ground that don't need a conveyor belt. So they can actually go anywhere in the factory through, again, uh, camera vision, uh, machine learning, and uh, automation. So autonomous driving, sorry. So, so these AGVs or robots would also need connectivity. Worker safety is very important. So helmets worn by workers can have head-mounted displays, which are augmented reality. So a worker can have the user manual come up in front of their eyes through a AR headset. Uh, the tablet that they use for an industrial environment needs to have solid connectivity so that they can have good coverage any, any part of the factory when they're walking around. And then edge computing and analytics, of course, uh, you can put uh, lots of sensors throughout the factory and collect the data and analyze it. So this is what an industrial IoT factory looks like, which has been enabled with, for example, a private 5G network uh, that enables all these machines to have connectivity in them. And that's, a, that's what we really call a digital transformation, which is happening in the industry. Okay, so, uh, so far we have only talked about 5G at a superficial level as a technology which is very suitable for industrial IoT. But, you know, I want to make sure that you walk away with some technical uh, understanding uh, of why 5G is truly the, the uh, transformative force in this uh, realm of connectivity. So the reason is because 5G has some unique attributes uh, that make it exceptionally well suited to address these challenges and requirements that we talked about of a modern industrial application. So let's go through them one by one and try to explain uh, very quickly, I know, in the limited time we have, um, as to you know what the standards have done in this space. So UR LLC is the first one I'll touch. So UR LLC is like a uh, kind of a difficult acronym. It stands for Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communication. And this is a feature in the standards, like the 3GPP standard has a feature called URLLC, which is introduced in the release 16 uh, of uh, 3GPP, which is essentially 5G. So it ensures that there is, you know, the date, the travel time of data from one place to the other is minimized, meaning the latency is minimized. And so that enables that real time control for critical industries like the robots and AGVs. If they're driving and they have to turn or stop, they need to have that position information or that camera decision making to be uh, happening in real time um, and has to be very precise. So that precision can be uh, achieved if your wireless network has the right capability to give you a, a very low latency. In the standard, they are actually promising less than one millisecond end-to-end -end network latency. And so if we had more time, we would explain how that could be achieved. But rest assured that UR LLC is one of the enabling technologies of 5G, which is very suitable or relevant for this discussion. Next, we look at why 5G has high reliability versus the previous uh, generations of 3G and 4G, for example. And so of course, reliability is uh, meaning, you know, 99.999% um, uptime. For example, people talk about um, five nines. That means 99.999. So that's five nines in your number. 
And so the, you can keep going to seven nines and things like that. So there are specs and KPIs that people want to adhere to. Uh, so in 5G, this reliability is, uh, there were some features that were introduced. Uh, for example, one is called redundant network connections. And another one is called improved error correction. So, you know, in wireless communications, uh, in error can be introduced from the noise happening in the factory or a fading, like the antenna wasn't able to see the signal from the other, <clears throat> excuse me, from the transmitter. So in 5G, they added many new features like redundancy in the network, so sending the data multiple times to make sure one of them uh, gets there, and also using more powerful coding mechanism and error correction codes uh, to overcome uh, noises and uh, errors introduced by um, bursts of uh, noise in the system. So, so basically, this guarantees consistent communications in the challenging environment, such as manufacturing or energy grid and transportation. You have lots of uh, magnetic noise, electromagnetic noise in there. Uh, there's scalability. So massive device connectivity means the overhead to add more devices is uh, minimized. So you, in 5G, you can actually connect a lot more sensors to a uh, small cell or a G node B um, versus previous technology. And uh, that is done without sacrificing any performance degradation. So that is also one of the key features of 5G is, is higher scalability and massive, massive uh, uh, what we call um, M MTC, massive machine type communication. The next one is enhanced bandwidth. So this is a very key point. So industry, uh, that do transmit vast amounts of data. Think of that example I gave you about the 4K resolution camera running at 60 frames per second. That is generating an enormous amount of data all the time. And so to collect all that data, especially like images and using you know algorithms to analyze these images, uh, real-time video of um, something being manufactured or inspected, uh, and of course, you know, raw sensor data. Uh, you know, that basically uh, requires more spectrum. So the 5G has uh, leveraged expanded spectrum in uh, what we call C-band. This is a new band called uh, three, in, in the 3.5 gigahertz range, which the FCC uh, and the industry uh, worldwide allowed the 5G to start using. And so this is a wide spectrum bandwidth which can be leveraged by 5G to have that higher data capacity uh, to be able to handle the, the large amounts of data. And then there is another spectrum band called millimeter wave, which was also made available for 5G. And that has massive amounts of spectrum available, but the challenge is that millimeter wave uh, propagation does not reach too far uh, in terms of distance, but in shorter, smaller environments, it can be very, very powerful uh, because you can reach multi, multi gigabits um, of speed very, very easily. So, so the use cases like high definition video surveillance, um, remote diagnostics, and of course, augmented reality headsets or maintenance, these are some use cases that benefit from the, the expanded and enhanced bandwidth available in 5G. Network slicing, it just means that you have smaller virtual sub-networks tailored for specific use cases. And uh, so industrial enterprises basically can more, can allocate their network resources depending on what application requirements they have that are running. So for example, if you have to give priority to a low latency, like an emergency stop button, you will give it more priority by having a network slice which is dedicated for that function and overrides everybody else. So for safety, you can have high priority network slices and then the rest come after that. So network slicing was introduced in 5G to improve quality of service and basically um, have a more efficient uh, use of the network. And then of course, edge computing uh, integration was another feature. So there is uh, 
MEC, Mobile Edge Compute, as an actual physical um, entity and logical entity defined in the new 5G uh, network architecture. And of course, it helps uh, overall reducing the latency to achieve that URLLC, the one I talked about, the first one. So that goes hand in hand with edge computing. So things like predictive maintenance can be easily achieved if you can have more edge intelligence in your system. Lastly, security and privacy is very, very important, of course. So they upgraded the encryption level and authentication um, protocols in 5G based uh, compared to the previous generation. So now you have advanced encryption and authentication methods, which are vital for industrial IoT data protection and system access control. One thing I will say here is, you know, in private 5G networks, the benefit is all of the data can stay on the premises. And so this data is not going to a faraway cloud, getting processed and coming back because that can be subject to hacking or subject to a cyber attack. So in a private 5G setting, all of the data is local. It's, it can be on-prem, but that doesn't limit it to be on-premises. You can have a single secured tunnel that can make the connection to the cloud, uh, but then you can monitor all the traffic going in and out of that uh, pipe. So in that sense, security and privacy are guaranteed or ensured uh, by the 5G networks as well. All right, so because I just touched on private 5G, uh, let's talk about that a little bit here. Um, so private 5G just means, uh, you know, it's a new class of networks. You can have private LTE also. I'll just use 5G and LTE interchangeably, but when I say 5G, I also mean LTE. Uh, they are even better for IoT or industrial IoT because, let's see, why? Because you can have a customized network design. So the private 5G networks can be optimized to meet the specific needs of the industrial uh, setting. And they allow for more comprehensive coverage, for example, compared to Wi-Fi, lower latency, and sufficient bandwidth to precisely basically align everything to the demands of how many sensors are in the factory. So you can dimension the network accordingly and customize it. Security reliability, I talked about it about the, in the realm of overall public 5G networks, the public ones meaning the ones that your smartphone uses. Uh, but that same 5G in a private 5G setting provides high level of security, data privacy, uh, compared to public networks. And the reason is because I said um, everything is local. Enterprises can implement this, you know, more robust encryption, more like strict access control policies and monitoring mechanisms to ensure that the, you know, sensitive data has integrity and it's protected against any potential cyber threats. Coverage in remote locations, uh, you know, there's many industrial operations do occur in remote isolated locations, for example, oil and gas, uh, shipping, transportation. You always go through um, areas where coverage might be bad. Uh, traditional network coverage may be limited. So you can deploy a dedicated private 5G network uh, to get the connectivity in these uh, challenging areas. And that way, you know, your industrial IoT system um, can have, you know, a seamless uh, connectivity of data, uh, especially for collection and monitoring and taking action. Uh, scalability and control, of course, uh, last but not least, you can, you can basically scale the private networks as the organization grows. Um, so, you know, you can have uh, one uh, access point or you can have a hundred access points or a thousand. The, the private network can scale easily through automation. And so you, you don't compromise performance and you ensure the, the maximum flexibility and adaptability for future expansion. So basically, you know, private networks uh, have lots of benefits. Um, and of course there's, you know, you can, you can compare it to Wi-Fi Bluetooth system. And uh, there are some benefits, uh, for example, you know, cellular base stations are already built for larger coverage areas and already built with SIM technology, which is the, the one, the, the SIM technology makes uh, authentication 
uh, much more secure versus Wi-Fi. Uh, Spectrum can be licensed or uh, unlicensed. And so the dedicated licensed Spectrum, you can have a private 5G network in licensed Spectrum as well. And so uh, it's cleaner and it has less chance of interference, uh, but also you can have a shared Spectrum. So um, moving on, uh, you know, so basically private 5G and LTE networks are very suitable for industrial IoT. That's the summary. Uh, we talked about their architecture here. So, you know, you can have a dedicated uh, mobile private network, a hybrid one, and a virtual one. So basically this slide is just showing you how uh, the different networks can be architected uh, using, uh, you know, one tower, which is a private radio one on shown on the left. Then in the middle, you can combine your private network with access to a public network. So for example, your device can have a dual SIM architecture. One SIM operates on the private network and one SIM operates on the public network. And when you leave the factory, your asset can basically switch over to the public network. And then you can have a virtual MPN where the quality of service is done through network slicing. So these are more architecture level uh, flexibility uh, afforded by uh, the network. All right. Now, as an example, for example, like, you know, there are pain points that we have to address. And so, for example, one um, example shown here is how uh, one of the solutions that we have uh, addresses this uh, pain point. So let's say a customer wants to secure and do real-time monitoring of their factory then uh, you can leverage this dedicated spectrum in the CBRS band, which is the uh, on-go alliance uh, spectrum made available by the FCC. Uh, it's called, it's, it's basically a lightly shared spectrum. And if, if, you are, if you have a specific device, which is uh, certified for general authorized access use, you really don't have to pay any licensing fee uh, in to operate in this spectrum and you will be given a lower priority and if you pay a little bit more for a license which is called a PAL license then you get priority so priority access lane license so in PAL mode your CBRS device can actually have a private network with quality of service and and you, you will preempt those general uh, authorized users and you will be given a priority so with that, we can solve this problem and have a flexible production floor with AGVs, AR, VR applications, um, 5G standalone is supported, and uh, network slicing is supported with dedicated quality of service. So with this solution, you know, for example, you can solve this one problem of real-time monitoring in the factory so and, and keeping it secure. So just like this, we can expand on this on all the industrial IoT use cases um, that are available. Okay, so I hope that this gave you a good um, background and understanding of industrial IoT. Uh, my uh, last slide is about the TELIC uh, product portfolio at a very high level glance and uh, showing you that we have end-to-end -end products which are all uh, industrial temperature range and uh, suitable for factory and industrial IoT. We can go from low bandwidth cellular, low power wide area networks like LTE CAT-M and NB-IoT narrow band. Moving up to like performance internet of things like CAT-1, CAT-4, and then 5G red cap these devices, then moving up to LTE broadband, much higher speed, LTE CAT 6 or above, which we have products here. And then we have the 5G broadband uh, products in the, in the shape of LGAs and uh, also M.2 data cards. So, you know, at, at Telic Centurion, uh, we have basically combined ourselves with uh, Telic uh, Centurion line to offer one of the industry's broadest IoT module portfolios. And this matrix, uh, you know, will summarize the, basically the products that we have, uh, especially for 5G in the upper right corner, we have lots of products and we um, 
pride ourselves in being leaders in this technology. And we have decades of experience in uh, wireless cellular communication, as well as platform and connectivity. So hopefully this gives you a uh, good idea of you know, how we can help solve your industrial IoT um, challenges with the connectivity solutions uh, based on 5G and uh, 4G and private networks especially. So I think that um, we are running out of time. I will stop here and uh, then leave some room uh, for questions. But before that, I will hand it back to Amanda. So back to you, Amanda. Thanks. Thanks, Safi. Um, really, really nice overview here. Um, I, before we get to the questions, I am going to drop a poll on your screen. Um, if you'd like to have one of our experts contact you directly for any questions that you've got, um, please just respond here on the poll and we'll be sure to have someone reach out to you. Um, all right, we are going to take just a few questions before we wrap up here. Um, Safi, first question that we received. Uh, how does 5G REDCap play a role in industrial IoT? Okay, yeah, that, that is a great question. Actually, I briefly touched on REDCap. Um, let me go back uh, one slide. Uh, so uh, REDCap basically means reduced capability 5G, okay? And so that means that uh, because the 5G initial deployments were broadband, the the price point was very high so they cost a lot but they can do huge amounts of data throughput like multi gigabits of downlink and uplink so those were the initial 5g um, product but then uh, to bring the price point low and also the complexity and cost and uh, size to be manageable the 3gpp release 17 introduced a technology called 5g red cap so 5G REDCap will play a very important role in industrial IoT. Why? Because it brings the price point uh, down to the levels where it can uh, be more easily uh, integrated into a lot of the sensors and machines and the tools to monitor and control the factory. So that's why REDCap is very suitable because it brings the benefits of 5G that we talked about about private 5G, you know, um, the new spectrum usage, the um, ability to have uh, more security, the, the high reliability, um, and all of the low latency, uh, all of those aspects that I touched on, they will be part of red cap, but at a lower price point. So hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Safi. Um, next question I have, um, what is the difference between using Wi-Fi and private 5G for IIoT? Yes, um, so, so you know, like uh, factory owners or, or enterprises, they have a choice. They can deploy a network with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, or they can upgrade to a 5G or a private 5G network. The key difference is uh, you know, 5G is a cellular technology, and it is meant for wide area coverage. So the technology has some special features built in that make it more robust and more scalable for larger deployments. And so if you have a small factory where the space is limited, you can probably get away with a, a good Wi-Fi solution, and you don't need to move to 5G. But if you have a larger factory or your number of sensors are so many that your Wi-Fi would basically get bogged down by having so many sensors, uh, you could upgrade to 5G because it is more scalable. And so, you know, for example, one, one Wi-Fi access point versus one cellular access point, the cellular one can basically simultaneously talk to many, many more uh, end sensor nodes than what a Wi-Fi one can. So you will have to deploy more Wi-Fi versus the cellular. The second difference is the encryption and the standard using the SIM technology makes it very, very difficult to hack into a private 5G network. Whereas, you know, Wi-Fi is a favorite technology for hackers to target because it's, a, it's more of coming from a consumer uh, space and the, there is no SIM-based authentication. 
so it is more prone to cyber attack so that you know if you're worried about some sensitive data in your factory uh, and not having that leave um, in the hands of um, cyber attackers then private 5g would be more secure and so yeah coverage capacity and uh, security privacy those are some of the reasons why you would consider a private 5g network Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to take just one more question here, um, and this might be an interesting one to end on. Um, do the modules for industrial IoT require any special specifications or anything? Yes. Okay. So that is a good question. That what you know? Can you use just off the shelf any uh, anything? Um, so no. I think the first the first and foremost is. Uh, reliability of the modules or the the hardware and software so they have to be extremely reliable they have to be manufactured in uh, the highest standards uh, of you know a known supply chain uh, that has uh, known good good components and secondly the uh, module has to behave uh, according to its complete spec uh, under all conditions uh, which are basically uh, temperature range can be a uh, full industrial temperature range. So, you know, not all modules are built equally. When a company designs a module, they have to keep in mind uh, what is the end use case. So in an industrial IoT setting, uh, temperatures can go, for example, minus 40 degrees C all the way to 85 degrees C. And that's a wide range. So you have to somehow make sure that all of the hardware can operate reliably according to spec in the entire temperature range. And that's one of the reasons why we at Telet Interior make sure all our modules are rated for full industrial temperature range spec. And then, of course, uh, they also have to be tested for um, uh, shock and vibration because a lot of times in the factory you will uh, experience um, lots of uh, noisy environment with shocks and vibrations coming from other near nearby machines. So we also have to have strict standards for being able to withstand shock and vibration. So all of these, you know, they, they have to be ruggedized and uh, industrial grade to be able to um, operate reliably in a factory. Great, thank you. Um, I believe that's all the time that we have for today. Um, audience, please be sure to check your inboxes in the coming days for that replay link. Um, Safi, we really appreciate your time today. Um, really, really great presentation here. Um, and thank you to everybody who joined us. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye.